Take a hold. Hold it. Now, wait a minute. Let me read the ingredients. We'll make sure it's safe for you before you eat. Skidley won't eat anything unless he knows it's safe. Let's see, it's got wheat bran, wheat germ, bone meal. Let's see on the bottom, it's got beef. Everybody wants to know how I got skid boot, and it sounds like I made this up because it seems so, so like a Christmas card, but I didn't have a present for Barbara, that's my wife. And uh, this guy in Campbell, Texas, his name was Butch Jones, he asked me to come trim four horses for him. And I said, yeah, that'll be fine. He said, well, do you work on Christmas Eve? I said, no problem. So I went over there, day before Christmas, trimmed four horses for Butch, and right when I got to this place, I noticed a litter of puppies in his barn. I, and I had my step boy, Barbara's boy, Russell, was with us, and, and I said, well, let's pick one out. So he gets the one that was looked like the biggest and had a lot of color, and we were driving home. And we'd probably driven about two miles, and I said, now, Russell, we're gonna be stuck with this dog a long time. Did we really check them out? He said, no. And I said, we don't know if this dog's blind or deaf or crazy or shy or, let's go look at how they act and see if we can pick us out a dog that, that, that might be special. Another puppy, and he was standing away from the litter. The whole litter was on their bellies and just kind of dog piling and their head was flopping around. Skid boot was standing away from the litter, standing on all fours and he was just, he was just looking around like he had something on his mind. And I said, Russell, look at that. And he said, yeah, that's different, isn't he? So we switched to that dog. So we were thinking of cowboy names because these were cow dogs. And, and we started thinking like Bob Wire and Hot Shot and T-Post and just kind of cowboy terms. And when the word skid boot come to my mind, it's like somebody said, that is his name, take it. You know, I think God was talking to me again. Sit down, please. Well, the first thing Skid Boot did was he started tearing up all the neighbor's trash. He was uh, chasing people's cows and horses. So I got me a little pig and string, you know, and I used it for a leash. I tried to teach him some manners. Demon dog. Demon. Barbara called him demon dog because it didn't take any time for Skid Boot to think he was real important, real special, because it was her new kid, you know. and. Uh, she fed him, took care of him, and he stayed in the house, and, and he got real over, you know, like a spoiled kid. He just, if he, if he didn't want you to pet him, he'd chew or bite on you and pull away, and if you tried to hold him and pet him, he'd just flounce and just shake his whole body, and, and then finally just get mad and just show his teeth and go to gnawing on you, and you'd have to let him go. I mean, he, he had a lots of fight in him when he was young. Then he'd come home with dead chickens. He would chase the horses, chase the cows, chase the cat. I said, Barbara, you're gonna have to get rid of this dog or I'm gonna take him, we're gonna learn some manners. And our little deal is if you can, if you can make a mess, you can clean it up. So we've got the trash can here. Here's the trash, go get it. Throw it in the trash can. There's the trash can. Oh, that's a good one, okay. Now, here's some more trash. There it is, throw it in the trash can. No, here's, no, I'm not the trash can, here. Go get it, in the trash can. That's a good one, you got one more right here. Okay, in the trash can. Oh. That's a good boy, Skid Boot, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. When the dog used to run off all the time, Skid Boot did. And it really took a lot of my time every morning, so I built this pen that was 25 by 25, and I kept him in it. And I felt bad that he stayed in that pen, so every day I'd let him out of the pen and play with him. And I think he, 
he knew that if he'd play with me and do some tricks, he'd get out of that pen. And I'd say, well, uh, okay, you want one of them toys? And he'd pant and whine, and I'd say, okay, if you'll sit down, I'll give you a toy. But he'd just sit perfect and look up. So I'd go give him his toy. And then I got to thinking, well, this is pretty good. I'm not going to ruin it by letting him have his toy all the time. So I let him play with that toy about a half a minute. And I put the toy back up on the mantel. Try to watch TV and he'd get in my way. And he'd start whining and panting. And I'd say, well, if you'll lay down. And if he didn't know what lay down meant, I'd show him. I'd help him lay down or I'd get down on the floor and lay down with him and say, this is down. He changed into this remarkable animal that would just pick up anything and learn any trick. Then he became my life. Play a little tag, okay? Wait right there. Just about every day, their morning starts the same way, right, with a game of tag. Now. Wait a minute. If you want it, you gotta tag my hand. Hey, hold it, hold it. Change my mind. Tag my foot. No, you didn't tag it. Every time somebody come over, I'd say, y'all want to see something funny. And he'd come out of that pen and go find a stick and bring it to their feet, and he'd back away from it. And uh, I didn't realize it then, but I think that's how we created a performer. I'd take him around with me on the job horseshoeing, and stop at a feed store, and they'd say, let me see your dog do something. The dog would hear somebody gasp for air while he was sneaking up on that toy. And then I'd say back up and he'd just make a motion back and they'd go, <sighs> and Skid would look up at them. Cause, and he responded that he knew he was really impressing people. A, a lot of people say, well, what kind of dog is he? And I say, well, his mother was a blue healer. We don't know his daddy, so we say part blue healer and part gift from God. And then I got to thinking about the word healer you know, not only does he heal cattle, but he, he heals you on the inside, makes you feel better. So I think six months to a year, now people had started talking about the dog. We I'd be rodeoing, I was roping calves, and steer wrestling, and I'd take skid boot with me. And I, I think that had a lot to do with him just hanging out with me, you know. We were working some rodeos up in the northeast there. We'd gotten a contract with one guy and he wanted us to go from rodeo to rodeo with him. And I, I knew I didn't want to stick with the rodeo business. I, I thought Skidby had better things to do. Anyway, so this guy calls me on the phone and, it, and I returned his phone call. It was the president of the State Fair of Texas. We saw you on Inside Edition with your dog and we're always looking for new and unusual things to have at the State Fair of Texas. And I, he said, could your dog just walk up and down the streets anywhere of the fair? First day at the fair, here we come, walk out on the street with our dog and a huge crowd gathers around and, and he puts on his performance and I'd be working on this little piece of carpet making Skid Boot sneak up on his toy and there'd be some guy with a turkey leg there. Come here, boy, come here, boy. And they'd be waving that turkey leg at him. And uh, Skid Boot would look at that turkey leg and I said, you better watch that toy. And he'd go right back to that toy. And I think the guy thought he was gonna mess my dog up, but he made it look better, you know. And cause Skid Boot would, would do what I said rather than go with that turkey leg. Two days after being at the fair, this fella come up to me. I want to introduce myself. I'm some kind of official up here at the fair and I want to know that you are causing a big commotion at the fair and I said oh, I'm sorry he said no he said it's good he said I just want to tell you as far as I'm concerned Skid Boot will be a state fair regular until he can no longer perform somebody made the comment you don't ever give that dog a treat so I thought well I'll just 
He let him buy his own tree. So I got some of those coupons that you buy a hot dog with, and there was a concession stand at the end of the arena that everybody in the arena could see. So I, I said, Skid Boot, here's your coupons. You go over that hot dog stand and buy yourself a hot dog. Uh, I, did, I didn't train Skid Boot with cookies or treats because he's a cow dog and it'd be kind of hard for me to ride and carry some cookies in the saddle and it'd be a little embarrassing to say, wait a minute fellas, I gotta give my dog a cookie. But anyway, the dog trainer, she said, let me see how you're teaching this dog manners, David. I said, okay, I'll just try and teach him to do what I say. So here's a toy, go get it, bring it back to me, bring it here, good boy, thank you very much. Okay, wait right there. There's a the toy, go get it. Bring it back to me. Good boy, thank you. I appreciate that. Wait right there, there's a the toy. Go get it, bring it back. And that dog trainer said, okay, David, I can help you. Here's what you're doing wrong. I said, what? She said, you're talking to your dog too much like he's a human being. And I said, oh, what should I do? She said, well, use a one word, simple command. That is good dog training. I said, okay, we'll try it your way. Stay, stay right there. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I hate talking to my dog that way. Okay, one word, simple command. Fetch. Uh, fetch. Okay, I tried those one word, simple commands on Barbara. Y'all remember her? And she wouldn't listen either. And I found out when I was training my wife, wait a minute, I didn't mean that. I found out when I was getting to know my wife, if you want somebody to do something, you gotta be nice. And so this is what I did with Barbara, and, and I'll show you it worked on Skid Boot. Skid Boot, when I say go, will you please go get that toy? But don't get it until I say go. That dog trainer said that'll never work. I said, how come? And she said, well, the way you said that, and then him, he has to remember it and then carry it out, he must have cognitive reasoning. I said, no, he's been to the vet, he had all his shots, he don't have anything like that. She said, David, I don't think you're smart enough to be a dog trainer. I said, well, let's see if it works. Don't forget, when I say go, will you get that toy, please? Snow. Uh, flow. Okay, let's make it a little tougher. Grow. Let's try it one more tough. Glow. Ooh, that nearly got him. Go. Oh, that's a good boy, Skid Boot. All right, all right. If you treat a dog like he's a dog, he'll never be smarter than a dog. Touch it, touch it wire. And I, I don't, I don't pretend to be smart, but. I think what I was trying to say is I thought outside the box. I thought outside the lines of what everybody thinks is good dog handling. And I said, well, what if he understood me? How are you ever gonna know if you don't try? Well, we, we had about a 10 day by airplane tour to go to Denver, LA, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida all at one time. Now hold it. Let me make sure it's healthy for you. Yeah, it's got fiber, got fat, got bone meal. Go ahead. Good morning, Texas. It's good morning, Texas. Okay. All right. Uh, this, this is the main thing Skid Boot's famous for. Is he just listens to directions. Right. Okay, I want you to ease up to it. Take a step. Get a little closer. 